All right. Well, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Becky Mars. I'm the statewide volunteer coordinator with Colorado Parks and Wildlife. And I'll just briefly kind of walk you through our new volunteer database. It's called CPW Connect. And we're really excited. It has a lot of neat features. Um, and I love the Riverwatch program and what you all do. I think what you do is very important. Um, so hopefully this can help answer any questions you have. And wanted to mention too that logging your hours with CPW is really important for a few reasons. One is that it really helps us recognize and communicate the impact that you have. So you may have heard that after 48 hours of service in a 12 month period, you're eligible for a free one year state park pass. So it helps us know if you're eligible for that perk. Um, but we also use that information to track progress towards things like our um, agency strategic plan or allows us to apply for grants or find matching funds. Um, so we do encourage you to use this system. I know that you've had various processes in the past with Riverwatch. And so I will always defer to the Riverwatch team to recommend um, what you all do moving forward. But this quick tutorial is just meant to be broad and help you kind of orient to this new system. So the uh, link is cpwconnect.state.co.us. When you're here, you may already have an account that has been created for you. So if you were logging hours in our old system, you have an account, you should have an account and you can just go to log in as a returning user. If you are, um, if you don't have an account, I would actually say just reach out to us via email and we can help get you set up um, knowing that you are already an active Riverwatch volunteer. So this is what I might see as a volunteer. I'm gonna go ahead and log in and your email address is what you will use to log in. Um, if you had an account in the previous system, you'll have a temporary password of volunteer 2021 with a capital V. If you're logging in for the first time, um, you should be able to set what this is to yourself. So I'm gonna log in. And here you see a couple of different things and I'm mostly going to focus on your dashboard and your profile. So on your dashboard, there are a couple of tabs that you'll see here. And to do's might be something like, we are asking all CPW volunteers to sign a new volunteer waiver and agreement. So that might pop up as a link that you can just click and sign your name digitally and save and that will um, complete that step. So any actionable items might show up here on the to-do list. Um, my assignments might be really kind of only applicable if you are doing other types of volunteer service with CPW. If you're only doing Riverwatch, you probably won't use this or see much here. Um, but this is if I've signed up for some kind of event as a volunteer. This is where my upcoming schedule is going to be. Where you all are going to spend most of your time is in this opportunities tab. So as a Riverwatch monitor, I'm going to have this link that says report Riverwatch monitor visit. Now we know for you all, there's a little bit of a terminology shift happening where a visit might be when Megan and Bradley and Michaela come out and um, come to your site, see how things are going with your station. In this case, it's where you will go to report your volunteer hours. So I'm gonna click into that and it's, um, currently a pretty simple form. The Riverwatch team may or may not add additional questions here, but basically I can just pop in here and say, this was from my Riverwatch monitoring on um, July 2nd of 2021. The time field is required, but it's a little bit arbitrary. So you can put that in, make sure that you put an AM or PM. Otherwise that X will kind of stay there and be confusing. And then I just put how many hours I was monitoring. So maybe I was doing my water samples for two hours. Maybe uh, it takes me about 30 minutes to get to my station. So I had a total of an hour drive time to and from that station. You can put in here, sampled pH, uh, oxygen and other things. 
but I don't remember what you all do. <laughs> you have this option to upload any photos <laughs> and then click save and that's it. That will um, record your hours. Becky, yeah. I saw miles driven in there. So like another yes. way that we're accounting for, you know, the time and what you guys give to this program. So that that's another field that's built in automatically. Yep. Yeah, so you can track this. Um, Riverwatch staff may use this, but some volunteers also like to track this for tax purposes. You can put this on your um, your taxes each year that might count towards a deductible kind of thing. So not required, but you're welcome to put that in. And from so a that, Riverwatch perspective, we use that for grants as, oh, as we apply for grants. So all of that data helps us in terms of the contribution that volunteers are giving and often you know, volunteers are that matching component that we're asking for in a grant. So really valuable to us as a program. Great. So yes, thanks for that correction. Please do enter your miles driven. And this is round trip. Um, so if you went directly to and from your monitoring station, enter those miles. Any extra miles, like if you were running errands on your way home or something like that, um, don't count that as travel time or miles driven. But if you're going directly to and from, you can count that. So once I um, submit that form, I can see my history and maybe make any edits. If, oops, I made a typo and I was actually doing my observations and my sampling for two and a half hours, I can go to my profile. And in this upper right-hand corner, I can say view full history. And that's going to come up with everything that I've, I've done. And I can say, oh, it was for this one on July 2nd and I'm going to click this little pencil icon and it will essentially pull that form back up and I can say whoops I meant to say 2.5 hours instead and then I just click save and it will update that for me. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out on the dashboard and then I'll mention more things on my profile and then I can wrap that up for you all. Um, if this is where the jury's still out, so uh, be sure to ask for clarification. But if you're the primary contact for a partner organization, so if you're the teacher at a school, or the example I have here is if I were the primary um, contact for the Purgatory Watershed Partnership, you can record your group's hours and time here. That will not account to any individual's um, ability to get a state park pass, we would need an individual account for each person if they wanted to get that perk. But let's say I'm the, the primary contact here and it's the same form that I just showed you. The main difference is that here I can say how many other people were there. So maybe um, I was out on July 2nd and I recorded that for myself so that I can get those hours for a park pass, but I brought 15 people with me and maybe I'm not gonna count their travel time, but um, this again might be one of those clarifications, Megan, for you all to have, whether it makes sense to count travel time or miles driven for those groups. But otherwise it's the same form. And then I just click save and those hours will be accounted to your organization, which is also really helpful for the big picture of CPW volunteering, but like Megan said, can also be used for grant writing and things like that. And I think about that a, a lot for teachers. Real, you're a great example because um, you're joining us today. You know, the students that you bring out to your rivers aren't necessarily going to form their own account. They certainly can, and we would encourage them to, um, just because there's so many other opportunities within Colorado Parks and Wildlife that this may open them up to, or what else does Colorado Parks and Wildlife do? But it's a way to to kind of give additional credit to all of your students who are giving their time to this program. And maybe it's part of your class or it's a club after school, but it is this contribution to this, this program. So I see it a lot for, for teachers where this would be a really valuable component to act in the capacity of your own um, individual account, but also as you know teacher at Burlington High School in Real's case um, in this particular example. Great. Keep in mind that you may see more or less than what I'm showing. These are all just demo examples. So if you are not a Riverwatch monitor, but you're offering some behind the scenes program assistance, 
you would select the, the visit that most applies to what you're doing. So the last thing I just wanted to do is run through some of the um, things on your profile. So again, this will exist if you have an individual account, we have created one for you if you're the primary contact for a um, partner organization and haven't used CPW systems before. Um, but here I can click edit to update any of my personal contact information. You can include any demographics and background information. I mentioned viewing your history. You can also um, edit my preferences. So one of the things here to think about, like I mentioned, is if you're interested in doing anything else with CPW, you may want to check these uh, applicable interests. And then- um, so There's such few interests that you might be involved so in. Right? Few. So I know, I actually might need to cut them down. There's a lot. <laughs> It's a little intimidating, um, but just I would encourage you if you have an account to go ahead and log in and, and update any applicable information. The last thing I just wanted to mention is in this view full history um, function, you can also print your service history. So like I mentioned, if you wanted to, on a personal basis, track your mileage for tax purposes, you can say, okay, from 2020, I'm gonna go in and print that information and it will download a PDF. And that will have a summary of everything that I did in 2020, including hours. I, as a volunteer, I didn't actually drive anywhere. So I don't have any miles here, but if I had entered hours for 2020, that would show up here as well. This so, could be an accounting for students who are putting this on a resume or something, but yeah. it was like a, a feature of like, here I'm pr proving some of my service hours. That's yeah. a great feature. Yep. So I think those are the basics that I am happy to answer more questions or go into more detail, but I think that's what may be applicable to all River Watch volunteers. Um, but there may be details that aren't applicable to the whole group. Yeah, I think this is perfect and a, a good overview. And again, Becky's worked really hard to put this new system together and does so much more than the last one did. Um, much more easily and there's so many more features that we will continue to to learn about and you know implement within our program to get additional information or hopefully make things easier for our volunteers that's great Michaela or Brother, there's... do you guys have questions sorry Becky uh no can you go back to the um like list of Riverwatch groups in there um, what I can submit hours for, you mean? Yeah. Yes. And just for demo purposes, I assigned myself to all of the roles. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so some folks may only see this Riverwatch monitor visit or only program assistance. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that you had bear aware. Like when I first glanced at it last time, I was like, what? We're watching. Then you clicked on something. I was like, yeah. what? what? <laughs> So this is my own personal volunteer account. So on my mm -hmm. personal time, I actually um, volunteer for the Bearware program in Colorado Springs. So that's why it's showing up here. So if folks are part of Riverwatch and do something else with CPW, they will see multiple examples like this. That's perfect, thank you. Sure. And Becky Bradley, what kind of volunteer opportunities are available beyond Riverwatch for volunteers and, and how do they look for those? So many. So if you are interested or if um, students are interested, for example, and have their own account, there's a couple ways you can see what's available. On this same opportunities tab below this section where it says help needed, there will be um, date and time specific opportunities coming up that match your interests that you've updated in your profile. So for example, there's this dog off leash cleanup day happening at Chatfield State Park on Sunday. So I might say, ooh, I'm really interested in that. And I can just click on this volunteer button. It will take me to a brief description and I just say, yep, sign me up. And then that's it, it's on my calendar. Um, this also will only show things that you are eligible to volunteer for. So if you're not active in a certain role, 
and there's a requirement um, to be in a particular role with training, those won't populate on here. Um, but you can always find those opportunities if you go to this home tab at the top and go to get involved. This has the list of everything at our agency that's advertised that is more of an ongoing volunteer role. So you can filter by interest or by place. So let's say, gosh, you know, I'm actually, I'm in Colorado Springs and I'm also interested in volunteering at Cheyenne Mountain State Park. You can enter that place and see everything that you can do at Cheyenne Mountain. And maybe I say, ooh, I really like trail work. I want to be a trail work volunteer. You can click here to submit an application to become a trail volunteer at Cheyenne Mountain. On this Get Involved page, you can also search by interests. Um, so if you're really interested in fishing, for example, you could um, filter your interest by fishing and see everything that pops up that's available there. So that's how I would recommend uh, perusing lots of other opportunities. We have about 500 different volunteer roles with CPW. Um, so I'm not going to go into all of them, but this is a tool that can help folks find something else if they're interested. Awesome. One quick thing I wanted to mention too, and then I can um, pause since you may want to talk about other things, but something that may end up being helpful for you all. So in the instance where um, you might be a teacher and your students really are interested in having their own account, but you still want to be able to enter their hours for them, there is a way to do that and I haven't even talked to the Riverwatch team about how to do this, but oops, in the individual's profile under my preferences, oops, I need, this is a bad example. If, uh, if we have a certain setting turned on, which I can go check on for Riverwatch, there should also be a box here with something that says volunteers can add me to a site visit, something like that. So you can check that and then Megan and team, I can show you where this setting is on the back end. But that way, if I were reporting my hours, what would happen is that it shows up with one additional section and it would have a button over here that says add additional volunteers. So you can click that and then you have to start typing in that person's name. It doesn't have just a full list for you to choose from. Um, so if I, you know, had that button, I would click it and I would start typing in Megan McConville because she's allowed other people to add her hours here. So that's another option that we can talk more about. It's maybe a bit more of a 2.0 um, feature for you all, but just know that that's available and we can help get that set up. That's great. And then the person entering those hours is basically giving credit to this other person who then is accounting for them under their individual profile, but Correct. maybe he's not entering them themselves. That's great. Yep. And maybe for those folks who are maybe tech, not as tech literate or something, yep. that's a feature that somebody can help them with. Great. Exactly. Awesome. Good. So did, in the beginning, did we cover um, what the requirements are for people to get a state parks pass? Um, I think we mentioned briefly, but that's a great question. So the, this is a CPW regulation. Um, so the eligibility criteria are that volunteers report 48 or more hours in a consec the most recent consecutive 12 month period. So for example, it's July now. So I would have needed to have served 48 or more hours from July of 2020 to July of 2021 to be eligible. And if I had any previous volunteer passes, um, they need to have expired or expire in the month that we're in, in order to be eligible for a new one. Yeah. Great question, Michaela. That's great. Becky, thanks so much for this overview. I'm sure as we learn yeah. the system better ourselves, we'll have more questions and they may come from our volunteers and we'll siphon them your way. But um, yeah, really excited to start using this and to seeing how it continues to allow us, Bradley, Michaela and I to better serve uh, you guys, all our volunteers um, and 
and really provide those critical components and reporting towards those strategic goals of Colorado Parks and Wildlife, of which the River Watch program is a really huge contributor from a volunteer perspective. So, Absolutely. And like I said, I really admire and love what you all do. I just think it's super important work um, and I'm impressed that so many people around the state are committed to it. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you. That was so good. I hope people take advantage of that.